So it's been a hot minute since our last Honkai Star Rail tier list. The first one we made was before the game actually released, after three betas, I believe. So the game has changed a lot. Actually, the game has changed a little bit, but our understanding of the game has changed a lot, and the amount of characters in the game has drastically increased. So let's talk about where characters stand in their power levels now, as of 1.5. And I'll probably do another one of these when we get over to 2.0 as well, and I'll just keep doing periodic updates. One thing I have noticed about Honkai Star Rail, and I guess opinions on Honkai Star Rail characters, a lot of people are very opinionated about their favorite characters. I just want to make it very clear that this has been my experience playing these characters and a bit of a combination of that and theory crafting and comparisons with other characters in the game. So if you disagree with something, that's totally fine. Everyone's gonna have a different experience and different characters are better in different content. That's just how it works. So with all that said, my name is Braxophone. Let's go ahead and move Song into the tier she deserves to be in and move on to the rest of the rankings right after I read you guys an ad. This video is sponsored by Reverse 1999, a 20th century time travel strategic RPG. Welcome to an alternative plan at Earth, where born spellcasters called Arcanists live alongside regular humans. On the final day of the year 1999, the flow of time got Una reversed. That unraveling is called the storm, but there's one Arcanist who is seemingly immune to it, and he sets out to find out what truly happened in the year 1999. One of the coolest things about Reverse 1999 is that the characters are super unique. Because the lore of this game involves time unraveling, the cast includes all sorts of characters like Regulus, who's a pirate captain who loves rock and roll, and a knight who is literally a suit of armor with a sword. The gameplay of Reverse 1999 is easy to understand, but still with need for strategy, as it's a turn-based game. You build a team of Arcanists and need to choose your spells and arcane skills wisely. You can now experience version 1.1, The Thief of the Rimmick Cup, featuring new six-star characters Millennia and Pickles, and the five-star character Diggers. There's a new game mode and garments as well, so it's a great time to get started. Thanks to Reverse 1999 for sponsoring this video, and make sure to click the link down below to get started. So first off, we have Physical Trailblazer. Now, this is the first character you, like, really get to, like, actually experience and use as a DPS aside from Don Hung. And uh, I honestly, I can't find too many uses for them now that there are better characters out. At the beginning of the game, because we didn't have a lot of DPS options, they were pretty good because they got the job done. But at the point we're at in the game, I would say that Physical Trailblazer is probably one of the worst characters. So I'm going to go ahead and put Kalos in F tier, and I'm going to leave Stella in D tier because she's the better MC. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just, I'm just speaking. Speaking the truth. Next up is going to be Bailu. Bailu is a genuinely good healer. Her heals are really, really big. They're very strong, and she has some damage reduction built into her kit. And her ult is basically a big emergency heal, which is super nice. However, the major problem with Bailu is that the revive isn't super useful if you have a well-built team, like a, a fully invested team in endgame. The revive is nice for when you get like RNG to death, but considering they just added a restart button to MOC, that's not super necessary anymore. You can just hit reach try if your character dies. Uh, and if they keep dying over and over, that's less indicative of you need Bailu, and it's more indicative of you need more investment on these characters, or you need to change up your team comp. So even though Bailu is a very good character, I'm going to actually go ahead and put Bailu in B tier, which is a good tier. By the way, don't let like the fact that there is an A and S tier and a must pull tier mean that B is bad. B is not necessarily bad. Bailu's fine. I think other healers in the game are a little bit better. Next up, we have our first must pull. Now, the, the title must pull for Branya is a little bit strange because Branya is, uh, she, <laughs> you can't exactly must pull her, but she's a character where if you can choose to get her, you should. If you're at the 300 pull thing and you still don't have Branya, Branya is the character you should pick up. She has a 100% action forward on your team for anyone but yourself. It does cost a skill point, but it gives you a huge damage bonus. And then her ult is a, a big crit damage and attack bonus as well. And overall, she's just one of the best characters in the game. You can use her with any DPS like in the entire game and she's going to give you a lot of value even blade who doesn't scale an attack can use Bronya because she gives damage bonus so she is just one of the best characters in the entire game debatably the best if you want to argue against some of the other characters we're going to talk about in the future but yeah easily uh, the highest tier possible she has so much flexibility in her kit and she enhances your stuff so much only gets better with Eidolons and light cone and you can get those free to play if you're dedicated enough so next up is clara clara is a character that we said was good from the very beginning of the game and as it turns out wow she's still really good Clara allows you to play a tank in your team even if you have another main DPS character, or you can play Clara as a su uh, sort of hyper carry, where basically the enemies hit you, you hit back way harder, and everything dies really fast. So there are definitely better damage dealers out there, but Clara still stands out as one of the best characters. Just due to her flexibility and how easy she is to play, I'm going to go ahead and put her in A tier. I do believe that she's probably up there. You could debatably put her in B tier, but with the slight buffs of the follow-up attack set with a two-piece, and with characters like Topaz, uh, she has gotten a little bit better. So. 
Japard. So this guy can shield your entire team and he can loop his shield so that way you basically take no damage or very little damage because you have so much uptime on his shield. Now that does require you to have a fully invested version of Japard. You have to fully invest in this guy if you want to survive the highest level MOC, but he has been solid since the beginning of the game and he's still really solid now. I'm going to go ahead and put him up in A tier as well. And just so you guys know, since we now have two characters in the same tier, the characters within the tiers are not going to be ordered. There's way too much nuance to that and it makes it really hard to rank DPS against like supports and stuff like that. So these are not going to be ordered within the tier. Next up is your girl chapter nine. She's going to be pretty good now. I think that Himiko got a little bit too much hate towards the beginning of the game. I do actually think she got some improvements with the follow-up attack set that made her a lot better. Topaz made her a little bit better as well. But the thing that made Himiko not super great was just the fact that she was erudition and she's meant to deal with five enemies at a time. And there's no content in the game that really like focuses on five enemies at a time. Now, because there's a new game mode coming out that deals with wave combat and trying to clear as many waves as you can, we could see potential buffs for erudition characters or, or use cases for erudition characters. So the characters themselves don't get buffed, but there's just more content to use them in. For now, I'm going to go ahead and put her in B tier, but she could get moved up to A or S just depending on the new content that comes out. So I'm going to put her in B tier. Uh, solid character overall, not a top tier character, not really bad either. Well, I, I gave far too much credit. Towards the beginning of the game, this character is correct, right? Once you get to MLC 10 and you start needing to push DPS, he can be okay in some teams, but his value is not necessarily what we thought it was before. He does a pretty solid amount of damage for a character that is a supporting Nihility character without dots, like a surprising amount of damage. This guy does a lot, but the value in him is actually mitigation, weirdly enough. Some people might disagree on that. That's totally fine. But his ability to stop you from taking damage means that you can run characters that are less good at healing or shielding or mitigation in general, and you can get a little bit of damage out of him. Now, the downside is you would basically be running him in the slot that you would be running another buffer uh, or another debuffer in. And because of that, he does fall a little bit short. I think with Eidolons, Welt can be a powerhouse, but since we're doing an easier tier list, and since we have so many good abundance and preservation characters in the game, his value did kind of drop a little bit. I'm going to probably put him in C tier, but with Eidolons, obviously he's going to get a lot better. And I do think he can improve if we start getting some pseudo abundant pseudo preservation characters because he does do a fair bit of damage on his own. Yo, this is Editor Brax here. I didn't really explain how he reduces damage taken. So what he does is he basically imprisons enemies and slows them a ton. And by doing that, you're effectively reducing the amount of turns that the enemy gets to actually take to deal damage to you. But on top of that, you're extending the duration of debuffs since they don't get to move as often. Looking back on it, I'd probably move him up to B tier, but I can't exactly make that edit now. So just know that if you're watching this section, I'd probably put him one tier higher. Yanqing. Bro got like giga power crept. So Yanqing has the ability to be very good, but he basically requires Japard because the second this guy takes damage, he's kind of flimsy and frail and, and useless and loses a lot of his damage. Yanqing's entire gimmick is he needs to not get hit and then attack many times and try to freeze the enemy so that way you don't take damage. But unfortunately for him, there's too many enemies that attack way too fast and it makes it really hard to play Yanqing. Um, not to mention that just other hunt characters do more damage than him and the destruction character do more damage. So Yancheng did fall off a fair bit. I'm going to put Yancheng in C tier because he's definitely not like the worst character. But as far as like the standard five stars go, definitely not going to be the best one to get. Arlen. I overrated this guy at the start of the game too. Big mistake on my part. He seemed like he could be really good. He got nerfed from beta to release and I didn't really account for that a ton because I tested him and he felt fine, but I didn't get to test him in MLC towards the very end. So uh, I do think I overrated him for a while at first. I definitely changed him down to F tier. Sorry, Arlen. This is an E0 tier list once again, so with Eidolons, maybe D tier, but he's F tier at E0. Asta, free to play support character. Nas is one of the first idol unlocked uh, free to play characters that you get, which is a bit of a bummer because she can be really good with idolons. Um, I do think she's playable without idolons. Just for the record, there are ways to circumvent her energy, and there's ways to get like a lot out of her buff. Still, it's just that she does get drastically better with them. Without idolons, super solid support. She's going to give your entire team an attack buff. She's going to give your entire team a speed buff, which is going to be more attacks, which is more energy for your team. And she is a really solid character, even without Eidolon, so I'm going to put her in A tier. At E6, e debatable S tier, or, you know, like A plus tier if we had one of those. I like to call this guy Horizontal Zhao, because 
he's horizontal shall. His damage is pretty good as far as like a free to play character goes. You can clear the hardest content in the game with him. You just do have to, you know, hyper invest in him, but you have to hyper invest in every carry if you want them to be like really good. So all in all, at Eidolon Zero, I'm gonna go put him C tier. Not a super bad character, not ideal for your main carry for the entire game, but he's definitely usable and, and definitely not too bad. So Herda. So we did get the follow-up attack set. A lot of people were hoping this would be like a massive buff for Herda. Uh, there are some situations where like it's it's better, but it's not gonna be enough to make her like super good. She could see use in the new game mode as I was talking about with Himiko. Uh, but right now, Herda is primarily a farming unit. She will speed up the process of your farming. If you invest in her and Himiko, you can clear out six waves in like 30 seconds or less. It is crazy. But because this game has autoplay, farming units aren't super necessary. I've seen her clear MOC 10. I know it's possible, um, but that's possible with most of the characters on this list. It's just that you wouldn't choose to Kurudin if you could Kudu Kudu. And in this case, Kudu Kudu is any other DPS and Kurudin is using her that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put her in D tier as well. Hook is pretty good. As far as a four star DPS goes, uh, she's pretty solid. At Eidolon zero, things are a little bit tougher for her, uh, but she, you know, she does an okay job. There's not really much to explain with Hook. I'm gonna go ahead and put her in C tier. Some people would probably put her in B or A, but uh, in my experience, she hasn't been super game changing, but she's been good enough to clear the content. You know, it is what it is. March 7th is another character that I overrated, uh, unfortunately. So, you know, I'm, I'm fine with making a few mistakes here and there. I think a lot of people towards the beginning of the game thought a lot of the characters were really good and they were really good for the content you were in. It's just that now there are so many characters that are better at that job that these characters indirectly get pushed down tiers. At the beginning of the game, you could use March 7th and Fire Trailblazer to sustain a team for MOC and you could push through it in time. But now there's no reason to do that because there's so many other characters that you can use instead. So because of that, at E0, March does get pushed down to D tier in my opinion. Arguable C tier, but I don't think that I value March 7th as much as I value like Welt and Yancheng. Follow up March 7th is funny though. Natasha is another free to play character that we have. You get her just during the main quest and she is amazing. She has a cleanse. She has really big heals. Now that is basically the entirety of her kit. But as far as four stars go, she gets the job done and you don't need Eidolons for her to be good. She's really good at E0. I've always thought that Natasha is actually a little bit better than Bailu because of cleanse. Bailu doesn't have cleanse, which is a really important thing in this game. But I don't think Natasha is better than Bailu enough at E0 to push her to A tier. That's my hot take. Please don't kill me for it. Cleanse is so valuable in this game. So I've Always thought they were a little bit better but as i mentioned before these aren't like ordered within the tier so next up is probably one of the best characters in the entire game as far as four stars go Pela is absolutely incredible. So I actually made this tier list on Twitch yesterday at twitch.tv slash Braxophone. And some folks started arguing with me about Silverwolf versus Pela because I put Silverwolf in the must pull tier and I put Pela in the S tier. It looked a little bit like this. I ended up choosing to, after after sleeping on it and thinking about it a little bit, I ended up moving Silverwolf down to S tier too. Not that Silverwolf is bad. Obviously they're in S tier. They're one of the best characters in the game. But the difference with Pela and Silverwolf is that Silverwolf in single target absolutely demolishes Pela in their, in their viability and their value. And in mono quantum, specifically like Silverwolf enables that archetype and Silverwolf enables you to play basically any DPS. So I think Silverwolf in my opinion is a much more valuable character in general but because MOC is so focused on multiple enemies for example having two elites and one add or two elites and two adds having defense shred on your ult that hits everyone can be seen as better than Silverwolf in some situations. Um, like I said it's really a case by case basis so I really am just going to put them both up in S tier. I really do think though that if we, there's ever a meta that's like hunt focused uh, Silverwolf is going to to come out on top of that by like a pretty large margin and i do think that silver wolf is a pretty comfy character so say what you will about these characters i'm just glad that there's a four star that is insanely good at e0 that people can use if they don't have silver wolf and honestly because there's two defense shredders that are this crazy at it both of these characters deserve to be s tier they're both amazing and you can just use one on both sides so oh <sighs> we move on to the gremlin E0, she's like pretty all right. At E6, she's a destructive force of nature. A lot of folks don't actually know that this character does a lot of damage. I'm surprised she's erudition. Um, like that doesn't, that part doesn't really make sense to me, but she is a destructive force of nature. She's really amazing. And most importantly, she's really funny. <laughs> she's just hilarious. At E0, I'm going to go ahead and put her in B tier. I think at E6, she could be argued A tier as far as damage dealers go. And in one of the MOCs, uh, Pridewin actually rated her S tier because because the MOC specifically buffed her gimmick. So, you know, if you're looking for another DPS and you're newer to the game and you really like her design, then just play her. because She's really funny. QQ is amazing. Uh, 
Serval is pretty good. I think the issue with Serval is that she kind of got outclassed by some of the other dot characters because the dot characters have other effects on them. Serval is just like a lot of damage, which is great. But you know who else does a lot of damage? It's Gwenifen and Luca, and I guess even this rat. They all do some pretty solid damage. Serval is free. She's pretty good. Not really game changing, not going to be A or S tier, but I'll go ahead and put her in B or C tier. I'm going to go ahead and put her in C tier at E0, but at E6, she could be probably moved up to B tier. Ting Yoon is going up in S tier, baby. Y'all already know this character, Ting Yoon, is crazy. And I think a lot of people focus on her attack buff because her attack buff is pretty significant. It's going to make the game a lot easier for you and just be like, it lasts for three turns. She's an SP positive character. She's great. However, one of her best things is the fact that she batteries one of your characters. Even at E0, the amount of energy that this character, Ting Yoon, gives to the character that you use her ult on and the fact that you also get damage bonus to that character is absolutely crazy. One of the best buffers in the game, very skill point efficient. And uh, overall, like if you have her, you should absolutely build her. I'm sorry, best girl at E0. I, I think to be fair, I do have to put best girl at C tier, but you know, if it were up to me, you'd be up there in S tier or most bowl. I'm sorry. Fireblazer is pretty damn good. The issue with Fireblazer is they're not good enough to solo sustain. If you're trying to kill content fast enough to where you won't actually end up dying because you have very little sustain, at that point, you might as well just not run any, run any sustain at all and just play like another buffer and try to zero cycle. Fireblazer at the beginning of the game was super, super overpowered, super amazing because there wasn't a lot of other abundance and preservation characters, but because there are now, Fireblazer does fall off a little bit. Not a bad character, but definitely not going to be top, top tier. I'll go ahead and put Fireblazer in C tier, so you're going to put Kalos here, and uh, by proxy then still has to be in B tier. Zilla has been power crept, unfortunately, but she's not actually like a bad character at all. And the thing is, the amount of damage we have to beat MOC now is insane. We don't need nearly that much damage. Zilla already does more damage than you need to beat MOC by a long shot. So the fact that there are characters that do more damage than her doesn't actually matter that much at all. I'd probably put Sila in A or S tier. The only reason I'm hesitant to put her in S tier is because there's a couple other characters that do more damage than her that are going to get moved up to S tier, but I do think she's still a solid unit. And I think because there's ads specifically, she is really good. So I'll keep Sila up in S tier. I do fear for her in case we ever run into elites, like multiple elites, more than two, maybe three elites. Then she's probably going to fall off a fair bit, but her resets do make her very valuable. She's very fast, does a lot of high single target damage. Uh, I'll probably put her up in S tier for now. Our general, our general. General Jingyuan. Jingyuan is definitely S tier as far as appearances go. One of the best looking characters in the entire game. But damage wise, he definitely didn't live up to Sila in terms of how valuable that she's actually going to be in endgame content. And most of that has to do with the fact that Jingyuan has sort of like ramp up damage. So the longer a fight goes, the better Jingyuan gets. But the problem is that you don't really have unlimited time. You need a fight to be sure. So if he was the opposite where he started really strong and slowed down, I would say he's a much better character. But because because he slowly gets faster and faster, it's a little bit tough. However, that being said, when the new erudition focused stuff comes out, I keep calling it erudition focus because it's going to release probably right after like Argenti, and I'm assuming that's what it's going to be about. Where we have to like focus on waves of enemies, I do think that Jingyuan is going to shine there. I also think that with the follow up attack buffs and with Topaz, he has become a better unit overall. So with all of the new buffs, I'd probably put him up in A tier, debatably B tier. If it were up to me or if I was able to do this, I'd probably go like B plus tier. Just just because I don't feel like he lives up to Blade, and Blade uh, is going to be our next A tier character. So I'll go ahead and stick him in B tier, but like arguable A tier, especially when that new content comes out. Blade being an A tier is not because he's bad. In fact, A tier means like amazing, like they're really, really good. Blade's damage is pretty solid. The only issue that I have with Blade is he doesn't have a lot of buffers that work with him specifically. Like if you're playing Blade, you either have to play a defense shredder or you have to play Bronya. basically. There are other characters you can play with him, but he is a little bit more limited since attack buffs don't really do anything for him at all but with that said he's one of the coziest characters you could pick i think for casual players even he might even be up in s tier he's one of the best pulls in the game for casuals because you don't really have to think he has a lot of self-sustain which makes him super comfy and overall he is a really solid unit especially in aoe combat the only downside is that he's not going to live up to don hung il and, and jing liu and honestly in some situations sila's damage he's not going to live up to as well so well that said arguable a or s tier but i don't feel comfy putting him up there uh where don hung and 
and Jing Liu are going to be because very clearly these two characters have changed the entire video game. Don Hong's damage costs a ton. His damage output is like absurd. It's absurdly good, but it costs you a lot of skill points. And until we get supports that have better skill point usage, uh, he is going to be a little bit harder to play. But with that said, if you know how to play him, if you know how to take advantage of him, he is an absolutely incredible unit that just shreds enemies. His damage output is crazy. This might be a hot take. I would put Jing Liu above Don Hong specifically because she doesn't have that skill point need that he has to dish out absurdly high damage as well. Now, Jing Liu does need a good healer, so that would be the trade-off. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to end up ordering all of these within tiers, but I would say that Jing Liu and Don Hong are going to be the two strongest characters in the game for damage, and I think that I prefer Jing Liu a little bit more. Also, she's really hot, and she's my wife, so I'm obligated to say nice things about her, but Don Hong is also a very strong character. Both of them are going to be up in S tier. Now we're on to our second must-pull. This is going to be Loncha. Now, keep in mind, guys, that says must-pull, not literally don't cancel me. I don't give a shit if you don't pull these characters or if you disagree with me. This is just my analysis, if you will, of characters that provide the most value in the game, and Loncha is one of them. His passive healing is so incredibly strong. He has the ability to remove buffs from the enemy, and he's almost an entirely skill point positive character. The only time you have to use skill points is like as an oh shit. He also has automatic healing that can save your ass. Let me tell you, there's been so many times where a character will go down to like 40 HP and they'll have like a dot on them, and then he'll activate his instant heal and remove the dot, and then also bring them to full HP. Incredible unit, makes the game easy mode for anyone. Now keep in mind we're talking about an E0 tier list. Yukong is a character that's a bit hard to use if you don't know how to play the game, but she can be very good. Lots of people use Yukong for zero cycle clears just to like showcase things. She's really good for hitting big numbers. However, at E0, a lot harder to use. You do have to understand speed tuning. I'm gonna go ahead and put her in B tier at E0 because I don't necessarily find her as useful as someone like Asta, but definitely not a bad character. And at E6, definitely A tier. Kafka, fantastic character up in the A tier. She does require you to invest in your other dot characters, but overall very, very strong. And with the follow-up attack buffs, she could be probably argued S tier. I don't have actual numbers to prove whether or not Kafka can keep up with Jinglu, Don Hung, and Sila. And whether or not she can keep up depends on your team composition and the investment of your other characters. I'm gonna go ahead and put her up in A tier, but I do think she's really solid. Love this guy. He has bleed, which is percentage HP based on the enemy, and he has has some debuffs as well. Bro is really cool. I actually like Luca a lot. At E0, I'm gonna go ahead and put a middle of the pack C tier, but if you're playing him with Kafka, maybe arguably B tier. Uh, problem is just outside of Kafka teams, like you're not gonna see a ton of places to play him. Sorry, Howard. Fushan is must pull tier, baby. That's number three. One of the best characters in the entire game trivializes like all of the content. A fully invested Fushan can solo sustain like anything in the entire game. Like even Swarm, like Fushan like makes a joke out of. This character is absolutely crazy, enables Mono Quantum, does okay damage, buffs your team's crit rate, and gives you max HP. Fantastic character, definitely would put them up here as one of the characters to get if you're newer to the game and you're wondering who you should get to make the game super easy. Fushron, Locha, Bronya are going to be three of those characters. And just so we can get it out of the way, the fourth character that you would might want to think about pulling on would be Hoho. Hoho is not going to be as low maintenance as Locha. She's not as easy to play as Locha. She's not as forgiving if you don't know what you're doing. But if you do know what you're doing, this character is broken as all hell. The fact that you get a massive attack by 40% at talent level 10 to your entire team for two turns, and the fact that she can restore 20% energy to your entire team is crazy. Her passive heals that she gives you for having her skill up are fantastic. She can be played as SP positive. I think a lot of people keep saying that she can't be, but she absolutely can. It's kind of weird. Also, ho -ho, it cleanse. Unlimited cleanse works. The amount of cleanses you can get per turn, you basically don't need any like effect res on any of your characters because ho, ho cleanse is just so busted. Cleanses are fantastic. You need them in this game. And that's why Lynx is also above Milu uh, because Lynx has tons of cleanse abilities, also has solid healing, better healing than Natasha, and and Quantum, which is better typing than Natasha. So Lynx can also provide taunt to your preservation or destruction characters, which can also generate them more energy in theory and also help you funnel all of the damage to like one or two characters. I do really like Lynx a lot, putting Lynx up in A tier. Taking a look at Top Ass now. So the issue with Top Ass is that she's not gonna be as much damage as some of like your top tier units. She can compete with Zila in some scenarios and she does buff your follow-up attack users. So I'm tempted to put her up in the A tier, especially because of the amount of characters that she sort of uplifts. She does deal a pretty solid amount of damage. I do think she's a really good overall character. I'm putting Topaz up in A. Some people might say she's B tier, or I mean, some people probably exaggerate and say she's F tier, um, but Topaz really is like a pretty solid character. Next up is Star Rail Yoimiya. Let's go ahead and place her. I'd probably put her up in the A tier or B tier. I'll put her up in the A tier to be a little bit generous.
Tyrus. She adds a lot of damage via her fire dance, but she also adds a vulnerability to enemies. And adding enemy Vuln is kind of crazy. Like this is this is a lot of value for your main damage dealers. The only reason I would put her maybe in B tier is that as far as her dots go, you're only really playing her with Kafka. You can play her for the Vuln with like most of the characters, but like in most slots where you would play Gwenyphon, you would actually end up playing something like Ting Yun, Silver Wolf, Pela, or Asta. A lot of people also say Gwenyphon breaks a lot, but so does Asta, right? So you have these two characters, but Asta adds a bunch of attack and speed, whereas Gwenyphon is just adding a vulnerability to enemies. Even though vulnerability is pretty dang strong and a unique thing, um, I do think generally speaking, you would pick Asta over Gwenyphon. So I'll be generous and put her up in A, but she's probably more like a, a B plus tier character at E0. There you go. There's our, there's our updated tier list. 100% accuracy. Wow, very cool. No bias at all. Most accurate tier list in, in 2023. Very, very pong. Like I said, a lot of these things can change based on the content you're in. And I think that a lot of the erudition characters are going to get moved up once we get a new that new type of content that's wave-based. I, I mean, I don't think you have anything to disparage about for your B-tier uh, characters like your Himiko and Jingyuan. I think they're going to move up pretty soon. As far as upcoming characters, uh, Hanya does look pretty good. If I had to guess where Hanya is going to be at E0, she's probably going to be B-tier uh, just because of her skill point help. Argenti, he's erudition, so I'm a little bit skeptical. I would guess, like not not talking about like leaks or any like uh, not like any numbers that were released or anything. I would probably guess Argenti is going to be A or B tier, but maybe with the new content even better. And I could be surprised and, and maybe Argenti is even S tier. So who knows? It, it's impossible to say. And then Ruan Mei would be must pull just because she's so fucking pretty. Look at her. But in that case, then Jinglu would also be a, a must pull tier. So actually get down there. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Or actually, I, I don't if you're going to be a dick about it. Because I think a lot of people are going to be a dick about it. This will probably end up on Reddit and people will clown on me for it. But th these are my thoughts. So I go live on Twitch sometimes. Come hang out. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Happy holidays, everyone.